Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Dental Assistant Tutor. Today, I'm just going to go over what to expect when you're on externship. So you've completed your school program, and you're getting close to taking the experience that you have in textbook and within the classroom, the comfort zone, your instructor, the students you have seen every single day um, along the way, they're not gonna be there. Externship, you're gonna go to a practice by yourself and you are expected to know what you're doing before you even step foot in that office. Yes, it's additional training to put on your resume, but it's also a chance that you can get hired at. I have seen a number of students in my career get hired before they even finish externship. Some doctors wanted to pay them while on externship, um, but that was against the rules, so they didn't do it that I know of. But that's what you went to school for. And now here's the thing. Some doctors like the assistant so much that you might have a month left of school and they're asking you to come on full time you don't need to complete schooling. You've gone this far, finished the schooling. If it's that important to them, they should be concerned about your education and about your well-being if that's going to be a practice you're going to work for. They could just desperately need somebody and have you ditched the last month and that's not going to work out for you. I've seen that as well. So here's the thing. So you go to the person that's in charge of your school for setting up extern sites and you give them a resume and a cover letter. You put down a list of skills that you've gained throughout the program. If you have done ortho or placing retraction cord, um, just to practice, uh, suctioning, sterilization, any of that stuff, put it on your resume. If you can do good impressions, put it on your resume. Um, if it's something that you have to critique and get better at, and you just don't feel confident about it, do not put it on your resume. What you put on your resume is what you feel like you're comfortable with and that you can go into that office and start working doing that. So you're sending this resume over to the practice or maybe the school is. Either way, some schools make you find your own external site. Take the resume to them. In the career path, you can put looking for a place to utilize the skills that I've gained throughout this program blah 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 and then when you do finish the extern site and they worked with you and now you have your rda then you're going to change that career path to something like on your resume um seeking a private or uh hospital setting looking to join a team long term you know you have to make it your own words if i read it off right now the ones that I have put, then everybody will have the same one if they're watching this video. So just take look up different career paths, uh, career objectives, or professional objective. That's the first part of the resume um, underneath your name that you're going to put that information. And research it online, which ones sound good. I do have a website. Most of you guys know about this, my subscribers, but if you're new, welcome. But go to the Dental Index Junior com. The link is below the video always. And go to interviews and resumes. And there you will find a page filled with information. And plus I have additional resources that I just added with more in-depth details that I have on the Teachable, which I also have on the website. And you can just click on there. And I think it's like maybe 25 or 35 and it helps you with everything that you need on your resume i also just created a book i'm very excited about it everything you need to know about externship and this is when you're just taking your time writing in the comfort of your home and i'm putting all the information in my experiences that my students have had um, and that i worked with them with so all that information is in there, some true stories, but also what you need to do to be successful during externship, what's expected of you and everything else. So check it out. It's on Amazon. Right now the Kindle one's up and then soon by the time this video is uploaded, the paperback one will be ready. 
Um, I made that very reasonable, so check it out, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video if you haven't. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dive into what to expect. So you get these papers and you go into the extern site and you ask for the office manager. And the office manager will direct you to meeting everybody, the dentists, uh, the other staff members like the dental assistants, the hygienists, um, if there's a lab technician there. And then you'll be shown around the office. You'll go and you'll look through everything and ask them, do you care if I look through the door so I know where things are at? Don't be shy about it because if it's in the middle of a procedure and they say, can you get me some more two by two gauze? And during that time you're being shown around the office, you don't know where nothing's at. You're going to be a deer in headlights. And you know, time is very important. You have to keep that doctor on schedule. That's why it's important to know what you're doing before you even get out there. Now, granted, you are going to make some mistakes. Don't sweat it. All of us assistants have had a prior to back in the old days when there was a dark room. Um, but just don't beat yourself up, but learn from the mistake the first time. They are taking their time to teach you, to train you. They know you're coming from a school. They spoke to your school. So don't beat yourself up so much, but do soak in what they've taught you. Now, write down notes. You know, what did you learn today? Do like a journal. In the back of my book, I also left some additional lines for you to just keep it like a journal. And someday you might look back at it and be like, wow, I had such a struggle taking that impression. But then I learned this trick and tip and I went ahead and write it down. Here's the thing. In the office, you have maybe a doctor with 30 years experience, a hygienist with 30 years experience, and maybe the front desk person has five. Well, that's 65. Okay. Plus, maybe the assistant's been there about a year, which is an opportunity maybe for you. So that's 66 years of experience, of wisdom, sitting in that office. And they know you're from a school, so pick their brains. And don't just stay in the back. You know, learn the front office. You might have a checkoff list of things that you need to do. If you have one of those, then just go through each one and make sure you get it checked off. It's your job to keep track of your hours, just like if it was employment. You have to keep track of your hours. If for some reason you cannot make it that day, make sure you call in. Call the office. Call the school. Ask them what you should do. If you go outside and the, your car is frozen because it's getting close to winter time during this recording of this video, you know, or you got a flat tire, you must have had a nail through the night, you wake up and there's a flat tire. Send them photos, send them proof, because this is your opportunity in that office. And like I said, some students do get hired at the extern site. So make sure you use it and treat it as if it was a job. Okay, when you get there, stay off your phones. I talked to a doctor, and I mentioned this in previous video, uh, videos when there was issues going around, that he would get these students from a particular school, one of the former schools I worked at, the schools I worked at, and he, he said that they're just standing around their phones. I heard his frustration through the phone. I'm like, wow, they paid all that time. Well, they haven't paid back that school loan yet, but Sally Mae will be coming back in about six months after you complete the course. Let me tell you about this real quick while I'm thinking about it. If for some reason you're still not finding work after six months after the course, okay, don't get discouraged, don't take no for an answer, but talk to Sally Mae. They will work with you. Ask them for a deferment, deferment, okay, and they will help you. That will never come off your credit unless you're paying it. You cannot file Chapter 13, Chapter 7, nothing against it. It's a government loan. So please keep that in mind because um, I don't want you to struggle. And for some reason you are working and having a hard time, talk to them and ask them about it. They will help you. It's somewhere where they stop off the percentage or the interest. And then um, you don't have to make the payments until so many months later. And then you just re-talk to them if you need to. All right, so getting back to it, you take the hours and you're going to submit it to your school and you're going to go ahead and show up every single day. 
all right? Now, here's the thing. You can call the office, research them on the website. You know, that's fine. They're going to be checking your Facebook out, Instagram, Twitter, you know, Yahoo, uh, YouTube, whatever. They're going to be checking out your profile, your Gmail accounts. You know, you can set up your Gmail and people see information about you. Make sure that all your photographs are professional looking. They don't have to be a professional picture, but you got to look decent. Don't be showing too much skin. Don't be having uh, too much um, fun times posted on your Facebook if it's open to everybody because they're going to see what type of person you are. Now, there's good and bad with that. Either they're going to like you for who you are, which will be in the great world, right? The most perfect world. And it doesn't matter what you do outside of office hours. But some of them are concerned because some communities are small and your patients will end up being your friends on Facebook as well um, if you allow that to happen and employers which I don't think it's a great thing but that's a sticky situation when your boss wants to add you to Facebook and you don't want to but in the meantime if you're open to the public and are reviewing your Facebook make sure it's pretty decent um, double check so they don't not hire you because they saw something on a post. Um, any negative posts that you put in groups, that is a big one lately. They want to write negative things about negative, you know, other people on these groups. Don't do that. Never do that. Never stoop to that level. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. Somebody knows somebody that knows somebody. All right. Let me get my thoughts together because there's so much I want to talk to you about. Um, in my book, I talk about how you should appear, um, basically listen to your instructor. She has you come into class every day in scrubs, hopefully, and look in the part. Um, you have to make sure you blend in. Um, and if you call the office and find out what color scrubs they wear, if you have it, understand you're in school, so do they. So if you don't have scrubs that match, know now ahead of time, get a neutral color gray, black, uh, white even. I mean, I used to wear white. So just depends. Just have a neutral color um, to blend in with other offices, especially if you decide to temp. Okay, so here's a tough one to talk about, okay? There are times that you might be so good as a student that you will walk into an office and that is what you're supposed to be doing is walking in there with confidence and if you don't have the confidence fake it till you make it if you stand there with confidence and you're paying attention and you're assertive and you go ahead and you know take the initiative to help clean up a room you know that looks really good on your end but um just make sure you show confidence and if you don't have it, have a smile on your face and everything else. But going back to my point, if you're in an office and there's some other girls in the office, other assistants, and maybe they haven't been doing 100% correctly their job, they know what they're doing. If, you know, hopefully none of my viewers are ones like that, but you know what you're doing when you're slacking behind the scenes, when you're not doing something, when you're not calling in old treatment uh, schedule, you know, plans and you want them to come in for more work. You're not filling in the schedule for the hygienist for recall. You're not stocking like you should, you know. Do these things to help out the front, the back office, um, even though you're there to learn. By doing so, you're learning how all that little stuff behind the scene works. But by being a go-getter, which is what you want to be, but when you're being a go-getter, there's going to be a time or two in your career path, you're going to have a hater. hate to say it, but you're going to make them look bad. I would say in my 30-year span, I've had a few that did not care for me, not because of who I am, but because of what I did, I would work. I get paid hourly. I'm there to work. I, you know, the uh, dental assistant pledge and the dental assistant creed, which I have on my website, you know, talks about being 
loyal to your calling, your career, your employer, you know, and to your team. So, you know, your boss is signing that check every day, you know, when it's payroll. Okay, don't let him be signing it thinking, well, she don't really do her part, you know, all because someone else has told you to back down. Mm -mm. Say, this is just how I am. You know, this is how I was trained to work. And they might say something, but okay. So just keep that in mind, all right, when you're out there. And here's another thing. I'm just being raw and real like I always am. All right, so make sure you share this video with your classmates. It helps me out too. But here's the thing. When you're setting up your instrument tray, no matter what the procedure is, make sure you know your setups. Because you might go into an office where, oh yeah, everything's set out on that tray. And it's not. It's happened, okay? It's it's all laid out. You know in your head, I need some extra two by twos. I should lay the doctor's gloves out for them uh, and their mask out. You know, every patient should have a new mask, but some doctors don't do that. So just go with the flow because every office is different. So put it down. And if you're being mistreated at all, right away, go to your school and ask them. But this is also kind of a challenge because they got to see how you would work with other people. Um, and it's not always you. Sometimes it's the staff at the office. So documentation, you know, like in the back of my book, I have lines for notes. You know, sometimes you have to documentate what someone said to you and talk to your school about it. All right. They're threatened. They're threatened because they know maybe the doctor hires a new person every so often. And that comes to another thing. When you are looking at um, Craigslist or dental poles or one of these job sites and you're going through all that, okay, if you see the same doctor's name appear over and over and over again, they're doing a couple of things. They're doing a working interview for free, which really some states it's against the law. So ask them if it's a paid working interview once you get past the externship. I'm kind of jumping around because I have a lot to share with you. So ask them if it's a paid working interview. Um, if you're getting your credits like your RDA and you're going to have your uh, nitrous or maybe just your x-rays, start off asking at least for 15 an hour. Um, we have to have a, at least a minimum somewhere to ask for and some girls are taking a lot less than that just to get their foot in the door but really across the board it should be $15 an hour for the RDA and work your way up just saying if there's any doctors watching this I think you that's that's fair because they do a lot um, even the students do a lot another important thing is besides getting past the people that you have issues with or they have issues with you you know just do what you're supposed to do, you know, just always take care of you and take care of that doctor, okay, um, and try to, you can befriend people at the office, maybe you already know some of them, but it's best to have a professional and a personal relationship separate, okay, um, when you're first starting out in this field. Uh, let me see here. Eating breakfast. I've told my students time and time again, make sure you eat breakfast. You're used to going to school, chilling, you know, taking notes, practicing, having fun, learning new things. You're not so stressed, but you're going to be a little bit stressed. So we're extra deodorant, but not too much. And I've had students that use baby powder and they would overdo the baby powder on their bottom and they look like they have a bunny tail. True story. So I would have to tell my students, make sure you don't have thongs on because when you're bending over and your scrub top is too short, they're gonna see the thong strings, okay? And we're not trying to floss anything else. So make sure your thongs aren't showing, your scrub shirt top is long enough that when you creep over, they're not gonna see butt crack. Just being wrong real. And then um, things I couldn't say in an actual classroom. And then also not too much perfume. I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, oh, here's a big one, okay? Your top 
right here. I just recently had a student tell me that the doctor keeps raising the chair up. I've been there before. I once had a dentist, there it comes, say, oh, you have a tattoo on such and such. How did you know? Well, because when you lean over. And so that's why the chair was always raised. So this is coming from 30 years of experience. So just keep in mind that you don't want to have a scrub top that's too loose. So when you're leaning over that chair and you got the arm of the chair in the front of you by your waist, and sometimes you use the prop there, I call it my, my perch, you know, you're sitting there, your dental assistant perch, and you're sitting there, and sometimes you have to lean over, make sure you're not showing too much, okay? Some ladies do that on purpose, just saying. Anyway, just make sure you look professional. And make sure you eat breakfast. Pack a lunch, okay? Get something, no fish, okay? A lot of people in dental offices don't like the smell of fish, and then the patients will smell it because it doesn't. It takes a minute for it to fade. So if you're gonna pack a lunch, pack something. And the reason why I'm saying to pack the lunch, and it's just because the doctor could be running over. He took extra time with you to show you something. Uh oh, you guys are gonna be running behind now. Well, you can offer to stay, which is brownie points. So make sure you offer to stay and do that. And don't just be the first one out the door just because you're done and my hours end at five. You know, offer to stay, to assist, to clean, whatever the case may be. Being in the dental field doesn't mean your day's always going to run smoothly. That you're, Those were times I got off at five, 5.30, but I really got out at seven, seven thirty eight. Not very often, but you best believe I was on the phone making sure that my child was going to be, be be able to be picked up from somebody and yada, yada, yada. So make sure you have a backup plan if you have children, okay? You're doing this for them as well. So when you get Christmas bonuses from a dentist, that is extra income and that can go towards your child's Christmas presents. So just keep that in mind. You're doing this for them. Um, and it's going to be really hard for the doctor to finish up if there's nobody in the office. There was times during snow days, you know, and like I said, we're in the winter months during the recording of this video. So keep this in mind. If you're watching during the summer that come winter time, there could be days that nobody else shows up in the office. I've been in that scenario a few times. And I like to share one that I have in my dental assistant need a notebook, a story. Um, it was what my very first dentist I ever worked for, and nobody else showed up but me. And I caught two RTA buses with all whites on, and they were wet at the bottom and everything else with the gray smut from the snow. So he had... Uh, issues I guess you would say at times because he had a lot of stress on him and um, he wanted me to clean a particular room up but I couldn't get to it in time because I knew I had a system because I was the only one there answering the phones everything it was a blizzard but I made it thank God for RTA so anyway from Ohio anyway um, he threw all the charts down on the ground for me to pick up when I told him I can't get to that room just a second, I will because I was very respectful. I was very intimidated by Dennis back when I started out because I was young, okay? And so I thought they didn't put their pants on like we did, you know? I just, I have a lot of respect for Dennis because they do all that education and they so well deserve to be treated right. But that was my first time being disrespected by one. And I was only getting paid because no one told me from my school that, you know, you can start off at a certain amount. I started off at minimum wage back in that day, and that was like five seventy five. dollars So, you know, he threw all the charts down, and I said, oh, I'm not picking those up. It's almost like that commercial with the Charmin. Not, Who are those? I ain't picking those up. Well, I'm not picking those up. I just told him, so I'm not picking those up. He's like, in my office right now. I said, okay, we got patients waiting. We got all this going on, but okay. And now that I'm older, I look back. He's a doctor. He was under so much pressure and probably stressed out. I wonder, where the heck? This girl can show up, but no one else can show up. So anyway, he gets me in the office and he, he starts yelling at me. I said, look, 
I was shaking like a leaf. I was 19 years old, um, little tiny thing, and I was just shaking. But I said, um, my mother taught me to respect people, but I deserve respect back. And that was disrespectful by throwing those charts on the ground just because I couldn't get to one thing right away. I, I do have your best interest. I am doing it up. I gained that doctor's respect when I stood up. It was hard. I was shaken, but I did it in a respectful way. I didn't cuss them out like, you know, nowadays you got to be careful because people are just different, but do it in a professional manner, okay? And just, if you're being mistreated, call them out on it in a professional manner. You're either A, going to gain the respect for it because you got a backbone, which means you'll have a backbone when it comes to a patient who won't pay their bill. Or you'll just get like a, I mean, it's a 50-50, but it depends on how happy you want to be in this dental field. Um, there are a lot of great doctors out there, but I'm just saying you can come across that. So needless to say, it still didn't sit well with me, even though we talked it out. So I started looking for another job. And I went to an office and it was downtown Cleveland, a Dr. Leisman, God rest his soul. And, um, Old Jewish doctor. His head always smelled like garlic. I always smelled like garlic. Speaking of which, watch what you eat so it don't come out your pores. Um, and I remember two stories I want to tell you guys. Since we're, this is all about externship and getting out in the work field, you know, from the beginning. But uh, he was like, I'll give you $7. I said, $7 to come work for you? Well, I was making five seventy-five. I was like, okay, sure, you know, and, you know, look professional during the interview. I had a really pretty tan. I remember, you know, women remember certain outfits, but I had a really pretty tan um, suit dress on. It looked like a suit, but it was a dress. It was cute. And it was a neutral color and, you know, hair print proper and, you know, not too tall heels and stuff like that. Not a lot of makeup, not a lot of perfume, just a little bit. I need a little bit. So I uh, said, okay, let me tell this doctor that I'm going to go ahead and take the position that I got hired. I went to him. This is the man that disrespected me. And he's like, Teresa, I really don't want you to leave. I'll go ahead and meet what he's making. Okay. Now, mind you, this is my first dental job. So I called the other doctor and I say, well, Dr. Eisman, I think I am going to just stay where I'm at because I am comfortable there. And he did match you because he found out how much you were going to pay me. Just being honest, he says, Teresa, I'll give you $8. I said, and, and the uniforms at both offices were included. So I didn't have to worry about scrubs. But at Dr. Leisman's, I didn't even have to wash mine. So that was kind of nice. So I went ahead and it was salary too somehow. So I went ahead and told the other doctor, um, I'm sorry, I'm no longer going to, what do you call it, work for you. He raised it this and he's like, okay, I appreciate that. But then years later, I moved back to Cleveland and he rehired me, the very first dentist. And because I'm not mentioning his name, it's because my sister, um, she now works for him as a hygienist and we didn't know that because we haven't talked for a little bit, but you know how family stuff is. We just get so busy, but she finished dental hygiene school and now she's working for the very first dentist I ever worked for. So that's why I'm not going to say his name. Anyway, those are some great stories. Okay. So the other story I want to tell you is when a doctor is talking to you, make sure like I'm looking at this camera, eye to eye contact. I was cornered by Dr. Wiseman, and he was like, Teresa. I said, yes, because I was timid. I would look down, you know, I don't know. I just had some issues from childhood, so I would always be timid and look down. And he's like, Teresa, when I talk to you, when I speak to you, look me in the eye. Just like that. Look me in the eye. And I said, okay. From that day forward, I looked him in the eye. They like that. It's a respect thing. You're focused. You're paying attention. And I get that now, you know, but some things were just not taught, you know, so I just wanted to throw that out there in case you're one of them. 
So let's see here. I think I went just about everything. So your typical day will you be going in there and they'll show you around and that's your time to ask, you know, da da da. Can I look through the drawers? I know are all the rooms set up the same? Are there rooms for hygiene? Are there rooms, you know, especially for just treatment? Is there an overflow room? Because you don't want to put patients in an overflow room and you may not know about that. So you have mainly if a one dentist office, uh, one doctor office, um, he'll work out of two chairs back and forth. You know, he should be at least. And the second one's the overflow. Or they he might work out of two chairs and have a third one for overflow. And then the other side of the office most likely would be the hygienist. There might be one or two. Um, in between doing all this, help out with sterilization. You know, I understand it's a new office. You don't know what bags they use or if they use the wraps. That's why you want to look through the drawers. Take a mental note. If you see wraps, you know that's how they do it. If you don't know how to do it, research it. Get on the website. I have everything about sterilization and everything else. It's like a little cheat sheet. If you save it to your phone and just fall back on it, you know, because you can't bring your textbook in and say, oh, wait, let me look this up real quick. How do I do that? Just grab the phone, go to the bathroom, um, have it on your screen, and then click on it, and then go to the website. If it says how to make a temporary and you're asked to do that, you better click on it and read it. If you know, if the office, most likely they'll have a morning huddle in the morning for maybe about five, ten minutes, um, have coffee, talk about things. I want to work for an office. I'm just sharing because you might be faced with this. I, and I've worked at other places, but this morning huddle, it seemed like we would go down the schedule and talk about every single person, but like personal issues and problems and stuff about that person. And some of that is probably needed to know, but not like this place. We, we went too in depth into it. So, well, and then one reason you need to know is sometimes you might have a couple that still go to the same dentist, but they're divorced and they both have partners now and maybe they go to the dentist. So you never want to schedule two exes at the same time for a cleaning. Okay. So keep that in mind. That kind of stuff I can understand. Um, but you'll go through the morning thing and they'll say, well, you know, that's your time to say, do you want me to assist or any of these, you know, and you can mark a check and write down on your little schedule because everybody should have a copy of the schedule during the morning huddle because you need to take notes, what you're going to do, what room they're going to go in, and that's a good time to do it. Okay, well, doctor, what room would you like this crown prep in? He'll say room two. So write two, you know, and then if they say, well, I like to normally use lidocaine or septicaine or um, synonyms, you know, if they have heart issues, write down what type of anesthetic you need to have out. And then um, if for some reason the main assistant doesn't is not there or they're going through people, uh, make sure the lab cases are in for the next day. In fact, on your externship, your very first day and there's downtime, just say, can I help you see if all the lab cases are here for tomorrow? That's going to show you paid attention in class. You don't have to tell this from YouTube. But you can say that. You know what I'm saying? Um, here's another thing I wrote in my book recently. The dental etiquette for uh, externship for dental assistants. I mean, it's just for you guys. Because there's all kinds of externship books out there. But it's for all different medical fields and, and administration and stuff. And this one's particularly for dental assistants. Um, but train of thought here so much to tell you guys um hang on hang on i'm doing it oh so tell them that you know i like to put that down on the schedule just so i know what to do and research it and then look up the lab cases for the following day um if you're allowed to place topical ask them so you can place topical and here's the thing um, I know someone recently that kept saying they needed to have anesthetic. Please, I need to be, and my patient needs to be anesthetized while well, she was doing such a great job. But there's somebody in the office that kind of was like, uh uh, I'm going to sabotage her. That's how I feel. And they heard her say, I need the doctor to anesthetize. The doctor finally comes in the room 20 minutes later because the poor girl can't get up. The patient's on nitrous. 
So uh, they basically was like, why did you wait 20 minutes to come get us to anesthetize after you placed the top of I couldn't leave and I kept calling and there was even a hygienist right there and I told them, you know, so they caused her some riffraff. So, you know, you have to watch out. All right. There's always somebody who's buddy, buddy with the dentist. So, and sometimes they could be good and sometimes they could be a bad apple and the doctor just doesn't see it. So keep that in mind. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to be honest with you. <sighs> Make sure you bring your safety glasses and a name tag if you have one, because they may not have an extra pair of safety glasses sitting around. You're going to pack your lunch. You're going to stay later. I mean, that's basically it. And here's the thing. Once you did one composite with the doctor, him or her, or the EFTA, then you have a, you're going to do another one and another one, and they're all pretty much the same, just different teeth and different surfaces. Make sure you're paying attention during those procedures um, so you can write down the correct surfaces. Here's something you need to know, because they will let you assist, okay, and that's what you're there for. But important thing that you need to know is the schedule might say number three needs an MOD amount. If they still do amalgam, some still do. So make sure you know your amalgam setup. But they say number three needs an MOD amount, but it actually turned into an MODB. Okay, so make sure you let the main assistant at that office know. Well, we added, um, or if you know how to already enter into Dentrix or EagleSoft, do that if that's the program they have. They might have Practice Works. They might have Soft Dent. Um, just check it out, but um, make sure you mark it on any type of chart, whether it's a computerized chart or paper chart, that it's been changed from an MOD to an MODB. And then look up the code. There's a list of codes, um, and you would go to, for amalgam, you would go to like 2140 is the start of amalgam. And then you go down and just look for 2150, 2160, and then you would put in that code. Um, and that was, should bring up the tooth, and then you put the surfaces on, M-O-D-B. Um, and state why, because of decay, because uh, you have to do a narrative and stuff like that for the front office. They need to know. Like, if you exit a chair side during a crown prep, they're going to need a narrative, the front desk people. So ask the doctor, what should the narrative be um, if you're typing up notes and they're helping you? Because the front desk person is going to ask you this. Now, here's the thing. I'm telling you this, and I'm sure your instructor has told you this. Whenever you're going to chair side during a crown prep, okay, or root canal, make sure you have an x-ray. Not a bite wing, but a PA, a periapical, so you can see the entire tooth to send that to the insurance company. You need an x-ray before you even touch that tooth. So make sure you ask, do we have the x-ray that we need for this crown prep? That's going to make you look good, okay? And then um, another thing is, and the doctor will be able to get paid for it. Because if he doesn't get paid, the staff don't get paid. And be like, oh, we had that girl from that school that one time, and she forgot to put that in. Because um, things do change during treatment. So be ready to switch the whole tray out if you need to um, and take notes. Don't get frustrated, okay? A lot of people don't want to, I mean, we all do when we're tired and we're working hard, you know, but don't get frustrated. Say, okay, and then switch out the tray. So have a backup plan. Um, be ready for change at any time because you have, could have an emergency walk-in. Um, let's see here. I'm thinking that's pretty much it for externship. Get your hours done. Try to get them done in a timely fashion. I know a lot of people are working and going to school, and then you're like, what the heck? I can't do my externship. I have to work. I have to pay bills. Well, if you get vacation time, then utilize your vacation time at your uh, regular job to do your hours for extern. Okay? You have to get them done. If not, check out with Aspen Dental and Dental Works and, you know, those places that are in the mall that stay up to maybe seven, eight, nine. You know, you can go to work and then do that afterwards. You have to get the hours done. That's very important to get that experience. 
I'm trying to make sure I have everything. Uh, so social media, make sure you have that clean. Uniform, you look good. You look professional. You pack a lunch. You eat a breakfast. Um, so oh, so you don't faint. Okay, so the reason why you have to eat breakfast is you have to eat because you can use all your energy up and then just, I've had a few just pass out. I wrote about it. They just passed out. So make sure you eat. Well, I don't normally eat. Eat. You might be running over at lunchtime and you can't get up and go. And you don't want your tummy growling. How embarrassing is that? You're sitting there. It's your first day. You're trying to get to know everybody. And then your stomach starts growling because you're right there in the patient's by their head, you know. Um, make sure you have good hygiene down below, you know what I'm saying, ladies? Because the head is right there and, you know, you just, come on, it's too close. So make sure that's okay. Um, Oh, when you're all done with the extern site, make sure you give a thank you letter, a thank you card. It's very important, okay? Um, and leave your resume with them so they have it in case they ever need an assistant. Give your best effort. Don't be going in there tired because you partied the night before, you stayed up late. You know, make sure, I know you're struggling because you're going through school and everything else, and that's a lot. And if you're taking care of family, that's more on top. So make sure you're not going in there working on patients, looking tired. And I'll leave you with this part, okay? So doctor says, okay, I'm going to have you cheer side for me today. Oh, okay, yay. And so you're already nervous. Well, you have to communicate with the patients. Talk to them. Get to know them. Um, because believe it or not, the doctor will probably call them for post-op calls to see how they're doing later on, or maybe they're a friend of the dare doctor. And they said, well, how do you think that assistant did? And they'll, they're going to tell their dentist, their friend, what they thought. So always treat your patient with the utmost respect, whether you feel they're wrong or not. Because back in my day, my parents' day, the customer was always right. That's not always the case anymore, but you can get more uh, bees with honey. You know what I'm saying? So make sure you just kind of correspond with them. I once worked for a dentist that, a woman dentist, and she had a male patient who did not want to pay his bill. And she was afraid of him. And I'm a little rough around the edges. So I said, I can go ahead and collect that payment, you know? I mean, hey, you made the dentures. We got to get the money or I'm not going to get paid. So, you know, I kind of, I, I got the payment. It took some time, but I learned that you have to do it with just kindness and say, look, how can we make this right? You know, what can we do to make this, you know, how can I educate you? If for some reason, you know, it's not fitting properly, offer to adjust it. Okay. Um, if the doctor is okay with you adjusting the partials and stuff like that. But that was my case, is adjusting the dentures. So, you know, I kind of spoiled him a little bit, talked to him, you know, and he calmed down and he paid the bill. So remember, you get more bees with honey. Um, another thing is, I wanted to tell you, oh, there's just so much about the dental world. Um, yeah, let's see here. Probably should have my checklist ready, but I've been so busy writing the book and everything else, getting prepared for this video. Um, the thank you card at the end. If you go to lunch, here's the thing. You might be asked to go to a lunch with them during the externship, okay? Um, just be honest if you're having hard times. They understand you're in school that you can't do it. Because some doctors, when they're offering to take the whole staff for lunch, they're offering to pay for it. So just verify that. So that way you don't feel bad. Make sure your shoes are clean because that does show that you're taking care of yourself in your car. I'll leave you with this. This one I'll leave you with, I promise. Okay. Um, make sure that your car is clean because they might go out and just see what kind of person you are and what you're driving and if you're not driving just be honest but just show up 
okay? Um, eventually, you will get that new car. Um, I shared a story about how I rode the buses all the time. All right, guys. I hope this helps you with your externship. Uh, get a good night's rest. Eat your breakfast. Look good. Um, be an overachiever, but don't step on any toes. I remember what I wanted to tell you. So, you go. And every office is different. Every doctor works differently. It's everybody's different kitchen, so to speak. And don't throw your instructor under the bus is what I'm trying to get out. Because you're going to work on something. Well, I wasn't taught that. Well, one, you're making your school look bad. And two, you're making your teacher look bad. And maybe she wasn't given the stuff to teach you it. Or maybe there's just so many different ways of doing an impression that you just have to learn each doctor's way. So just be open to change. And you'll have much success in this field. Don't take no for an answer. Don't start crying if you don't get the first dental assistant job. Keep on searching. Keep on looking. And it will happen. Guys, this is Teresa, the dental assistant tutor. I truly hope this helps you. Don't forget to check out the links below. And please like and share this video.